this is a warning. This episode of Beyond the Dark contains very graphic images. The artistic renditions do not depict any of the victims' faces nor appearance out of respect. However, with that being said, there are many scenes in this video that some viewers may find disturbing. You have been warned. On the 21st of May, 1938, a young 21-year-old man would cut the power to a small Japanese village. He then strapped two electrical torches to his head, armed himself with a Remington Model 11 shotgun, a katana, and an axe. He proceeded to prowl through the village, butchering anyone he could find. When his killing spree finally came to an end, 31 lives were taken, including his own. Mutsu Tui had committed the biggest mass murder in Japanese history, simply known as the Suyama Massacre. Mutsu Toi was born March 5, 1917, in the Okiyama Prefecture of Japan. Sadly, however, tragedy struck Mutsu at an extremely young age. While he was still just an infant, both of his parents died of tuberculosis. This left Mutsu and his sister to be raised by their grandmother in the small village of Kaimo. Growing up, it was said he was a very outgoing and happy child having a very close relationship with both his grandmother and sister. However, at the age of 17, his sister had found love, marrying in 1934 and moving out of the house. This left Mutsu to take care of his aging grandmother. Mutsu, deeply affected by his sister's departure, had been classed as a high kikamori by many people in the village. High kikamori is commonly assigned to a reclusive adolescent, withdrawn from society and seeking extreme degrees of isolation and confinement. It was during this time in his life that three major events took place. In 1936, the story of Sada Abe had made national news. Sada Abe had strangled her lover, severed his penis and testicles with a kitchen knife, and carried them around in her kimono until her arrest three days later. Mutsu Toy had taken an obsessive interest in this story. He'd even begun writing a book about the incident. However, this was not seen as a red flag due to the notoriety of the case. The second and most prevalent occurrence was that Mutsu had been participating in the ancient Japanese tradition of Yobai, also known as night crawling, most commonly practiced by young men and women, was the act of sneaking into the household of a potential love interest during the night. And while the girl was asleep, the young man would enter her room and attempt to entice her into sex. If the woman consented, they would spend the night together. Once the deed was done, the young man would leave quietly. This could go on for three consecutive nights, at which point the couple would begin to date openly. This method of courtship potentially led to marriage. Sometime in May 1937, Mutsu had been diagnosed with tuberculosis. During this time, TB was incurable, and the young women of the village began to reject his sexual advances. According to accounts provided by Mutsu himself, his neighbors ostracized and belittled him. With no one else to turn to, and no cure available, in Mutsu Toy's mind, he had been given a death sentence. In the late evening of the 20th of May, Mutsu Toy climbed up an electrical pylon and cut the power to the entire village, casting it into darkness. At around 1.30am, he took his first life. He killed his 76-year-old grandmother by decapitating her with an axe. Mutsu had finally taken the first steps, and he knew now there was no going back. He strapped two electrical torches to his head, armed himself with his browning shotgun, an axe, and a katana. He would now prowl through the village, slaughtering anyone he could find. Two survivors claimed that during his rampage, Mutsu Toy showed very little emotion. He appeared calm and collected. They also say that due to the light attached to his head, he looked more demon than man. Mutsu Toy's reign of terror lasted 90 minutes, during which time he massacred a total of 30 people, their ages ranging from 5 to 85 years old. After the fall of his 30th victim, Mutsu then turned the gun on himself. He would later state in his suicide note that he executed his grandmother because he could not bear leaving her alive to face the shame and social stigma that would be associated with a murderer's grandmother. Mutsu Toy had broken into a total of 11 houses and slaughtered every family he could find. 
Sources claim while breaking into one house, the family members begged for their lives. He would then in turn kill every family member with his katana. Unaware and defenseless, his victims had been lured into a false sense of security. As only one week prior, the police had been called to Mutsotoi's house to confiscate all weapons he possessed. He had been overheard by neighbors that he was planning the massacre. When police arrived, they removed a multitude of firearms, including at the time, one of his shotguns. The people of the village believed they had stopped Mutsu's plans, and they continued to ridicule the man, believing he was no longer a threat. Unbeknownst to them, Mutsu had not let this stop him as he purchased another shotgun. This time, he kept his plans a closely guarded secret. Seven suicide notes were later found, in one of which, he claimed that he hadn't managed to take as many lives as he planned. A lot of legend has been associated with the Suyama massacre. But what is certain, Mutsu Toy left only carnage in his wake. The massacre left deep scars on the town, and in an attempt to separate themselves from the blood legacy, the town's name was changed to Kayo, and the village has secluded itself in order to bury its horrific past. A killing spree like Mutsu Toy would not be seen again until Wu Bum Kun, a police officer of South Korea, slaughtered a total of 56 people and wounded 35 others before taking his own life in April of 1982. I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. This was actually quite a difficult episode to do about such a tragic event. While doing my research upon the Suyama massacre, there are a lot of conflicting reports due to a lot of it going down into legend. If you've ever noticed in manga, video games, film, so on and so forth, you may notice a character with flashlights on their forehead. From what I've managed to gather and see, this actually all leads back to Mutsu Toy. It's strange to see how such a tragic event has managed to shape its way into pop culture. I would also like to put on a side note, I am not a native Japanese speaker, and as much as I absolutely adore the language, I cannot speak it. So please forgive any mispronunciations you may have heard, and I highly doubt I managed to say all of it 100% correct. If I did, that is something I'll be extremely proud of. I do also have a second channel on a much lighter note, because, you know, I've got to get into the oversaturated market somehow, so of course it's a gaming channel. Please keep in mind, I do have a very dark sense of humour, which probably doesn't surprise many of you considering the topics I discuss on this lovely channel. So if you wish to check that out, there will be a link in the description and also here. I would also like to thank Mrs. Blank, who is the co-writer on this episode. And of course, I would like to thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and give me any suggestions on cults, serial killers, and atrocities you would like me to cover in later episodes. This has been Mr. Blank. Thank you for watching Beyond the Dark.